Woohoo! Alright everyone, welcome back to another Game Vault video. As always, I'm Captain Beefy. This is the Game Vault. We're going to talk about one of my favorite developers, Ubisoft, once again. Let's cue to music and we'll get right to it. Alright, so when I say favorite, those of you who have been here for a while, or before at least, know that I'm being quite sarcastic on that. Pretty much can't stand Ubisoft to think they're one of the worst developers out there, and it looks like they are even in more trouble than we anticipated. So, we saw several games underperform, such as uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Um, we hear rumors of X-Defiant, although that's being denied. I don't know. We don't see any official numbers on that yet, so I'm kind of curious to see how that one's doing. Uh, I know Skull and Bones was an abysmal failure. Um, Assassin's Creed Shadows delayed from November into next year, into February, and probably beyond that. Uh, the Prince of Persia game didn't do so well. Yeah, they've been, they haven't been hitting their sales um, goals and so, so forth and so on. And some investors are asking them to take the company private to hopefully, I don't know, get things back in order here. Uh, Ubisoft is doing a lot of things wrong out there. Injecting a lot of politics into the game. When I say politics, I mean like um, identity politics, you know. The whole race swapping, the gender swapping, the gay LGBT agenda, and all that other nonsense. That all it does, you know, they call it DEI, it's under the blanket of DEI, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion. And they even have a department for it and initiatives for it. They hire women into a mentorship program, women and non-binary human beings, whatever that is, um, it's, you know, and exclude men from it. They're doing all kinds of horrible things. And then on top of that, they monetize all these games to a ridiculous extent. And you don't own your games, and they tell you you should get used to not owning your games. So pretty much you're in the toilet right now. People are not liking Ubisoft right now, myself included. Uh, but anyway... Here's the latest report. 700 Ubisoft employees strike. Uh, company in response to return to office requirement believed to be an attempt to force resignations. So I've been predicting a crash for Ubisoft. A pretty big crash. They've already laid off quite a few people. And this is a good way to force people to resign instead of laying them off. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, sometimes you want to do that as a company. You want people to resign. You don't have to pay out certain things, um depending on contracts and all that, you know, you may be exempt from paying them out certain things when they resign, as opposed to if you cut them loose. So it's probably what they're doing right now to force some people to come back to work. And I, you know, this whole work at home thing all exploded during the COVID pandemic four years ago. And it got people used to working at home, quite a few people that are able to work at home. And I know there's strong arguments for doing it, but personally, as somebody who has been around the block quite a few times and has seen human nature and seen through human nature, I don't trust anybody to work at home, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm sure there's a certain degree of people that, or a certain number of people that are going to be great at it and are going to thrive in that environment and all that, but I don't think you're ever going to get 100% out of people like that. Not that you'll ever get 100% at the office, guaranteed, but at least at the office you can see these people and make sure that they're there every day. You know, we've heard... And we've seen these TikTok videos of hacks, you know, about how to get away with not working when you work at home. I've seen um, articles about guys who are holding two or three jobs consecutively at the same time and making money off all of them and are working at home from them all. And, you know, I guess they're just doing the bare minimum to get by. And is, is it wrong? I mean, I guess, you know, if you're, if you're fulfilling the requirements of the job and they're not firing you well and you're able to do that... More power to you, brother. That's freaking pretty messed up that you can do that, you know? But it also shows that, I don't know, that whatever. It's just weird. But anyway, yeah, so let's read this story a little bit and talk about it here. So around 700 employees at its French studios have reportedly gone on strike in response to the company requiring employees to be in working at the office as opposed to work from home. Uh, back in September, the French video game union uh, syndicate, the Trevilleuse, c'est... De jeu vieux, 
<laughs> I can't speak French, uh, called for Ubisoft employees to strike on October 15th, 16th, and 17th after the company demanded employees begin working in the company's offices for three days per week for all employees. Three days, you know, 60% of the work week if they adhere to a five-day work week like we do here in the States. I'm not sure if there's anything different over in France, but, you know, that's the way it is here. Uh, the union also shared that it believes Ubisoft made this move, given it knows the consequence of its decision will be the loss of our colleagues' jobs, the disorganization of any game projects, and a drastic increase in psychosocial risks for those who remain. Uh, is this what they're doing to themselves? <laughs> Anyway, furthermore, it noted the decision is announced immediately after the failure of the profit-sharing negotiations. Uh, yeah, they're trying to... Anyway, exactly like previous salary negotiations, management's proposals were unacceptable. The negotiations timetable was appalling and management was deaf to the proposals of the various employee representatives. Given this, the union stated to express our anger, we call all Ubisoft employees in France to a first strike on October 15, 16, and 17. So yeah, I guess they had some profit-sharing negotiations. To really, based on the way things sound right now, I don't think Ubisoft's making many profits. So, you know, that could be why the proposals were unacceptable and the timetable was appalling because they're trying to make some money and it just looks like they're spiraling down, 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 not making the money they anticipated they would make. So... You know, good luck getting any kind of bonus from that. Um, it also shared its demands first at once, a formal agreement on remote work with a due process of real negotiation between management and unions, not an arbitrary decision taken several months in advance, uh, one which guarantees that each person can freely choose its number of remote days and when they are in a week, as well as being counted by the month and not by the week. <laughs> That's interesting. So you could, in theory, if you do it by the month and you had you know, nine days or 12 days or whatever. Yeah, you could work the first 12 days in the office. That would be two weeks and two days. And then the rest of the month you work at home. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, second, the union demands an immediate increase in all salaries to compensate for the drop in our living standards in recent years, a restoration of the profit sharing at a 60% objective, the end of the gender pay gap, and a higher increase in low salaries. Is there a real gender gap? You know, they, everybody always talks about the pay gap. The pay gap does not exist. Okay. All right. To be fair, it exists, but not in the cut and dry way that these people make it seem. We, you know, companies do not pay women 70 cents on the dollar. It's illegal. At least here in the United States it is. So I can't speak for France, but here in the United States, we don't pay women 70 cents on a dollar or 78 or whatever it is. Okay. We pay them the same. If a man and a woman get hired for the same job and all that, they're both going to get, and we're going to, for one of better, $10 an hour, okay? Just using a round number there. Now, the pay gap isn't necessarily upon hire, but it does tend to happen later on in a career as women tend to miss more time from work and don't dedicate as much time to overtime and the like, okay? Take, for instance, you know, you've got a... So, the man and the woman are both hired at $10 an hour. Five years into their careers, the woman gets pregnant and wants to have a baby. So she takes some time off to have that baby, right? It might only be a month or so to have the baby and bond with it and then to come back to work. Uh, she could have a rough pregnancy and it could end up being three months or six months altogether. You know, her final three months, she could be bedridden and it could take her a good three months to recover from that and get back to work. So by the time she gets back to work, now she's six months behind her colleague who didn't take that time off. Okay. So now baby's sick. She has to take a day off here and there, not feeling well. Um, doctor's appointments, all that sort of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Moving on, school begins. Mom has to take some time off to go to the PTA meetings, to see the um, recitals, take the kid to the soccer game and stuff like that. Women tend to do that more than men. Now this is just a... a and, you know, just just an overall view of this, okay? I, granted, every situation is different. Every couple is different. But for the most part, women dedicate more time to doing that kind of stuff. It's in their nature. And it's not in the guy's nature. The guy is the provider. He will just... Meanwhile, her husband is just working harder to make that money to bring home, you know, a little bit more. So, yeah, we can afford that soccer uniform for the kid. And, yeah, we can afford to send him to camp this year. And, yeah, we can do this. And, oh, my God, there's braces. And, there, you know, so it is a, a dual role there for man and woman. And that's why it's so hard for single parents to raise a kid is because you, 
you need them both there. But we're getting way off topic here. So for the other day, so yeah, pay gap. So over this, over all the years and all that, ten years, fifteen years down the road, the woman has w missed a lot more time than the man due to all these little sorts of things, and thus she is paid less. Probably she hasn't stayed late on Fridays to work overtime. She hasn't come in on the Saturdays and Sundays because she wants to spend time with her child. Meanwhile, the man is more driven because he is, you know, he is the provider. Isn't that the way it goes? Anyway. Finally, I want Ubisoft to listen to employees' opinions. By the implementation of a social dialogue worthy of the name, management seems indeed to confuse monologue with dialogue. Anyway, reportedly around 700 employees did go on strike in France, according to Le Monde. The uh, outlet noted AFP saw around 50 people on a picket line in Montpellier and more than 100 in Paris with Ubisoft offices in Annecy and Lyon also affected. The STJV union said more than 700 were taking part. One employee informed the outlet, how long will it be before they start laying off workers and downgrading their ambitions? She also described the atmosphere as gloomy. Well, things can't be good at Ubisoft right now. You guys are getting shredded every which way we go. Anytime I do a video on Ubisoft and I, I come down on them, people come out of the woodwork and commend me for it because nobody likes Ubisoft anymore. They've turned into a trash company. They just, I mean, look at this. Look at these, look at the little ears and all that. It's so, the pink. <laughs> X Defiant, guys. Yeah, that's really cool. That's what you want to look like. Uh, so, moving on. According to the union, the strike is spread outside France and into Italy as well. I posted on X today, workers at Ubisoft Milan are also on strike against a return to three days a week in office. It added full support to them and to... Uh, Federación Impigati Opari Aparai Metallers GC. I don't know. I don't speak Italian either. <laughs> so, yeah. the uh, These strikes come amid Ubisoft finding itself in dire financial straits. Back in September, the company significantly lowered its QT net bookings from $500 million to 350 to 370 We've talked about this time and time again. The company also finds itself accused by Slovakian investment firm AJ Investments of intentionally manipulating its stock price along Chinese developer investor Tencent. I'll, I'll link this so you can read all of it to yourself, but the allegation here is that they're purposely lowering the value, Gilly Molt and all, so that Gilly Molt and Tencent can actually take the company private and buy it for a much cheaper price than it would. That's why they're doing all this nonsense like um, Yasuke and all to lower the value of the stock, lower the value of the company, make it more affordable. They can buy it up, they can bring it back online, get things together, and then maybe recover that money, maybe take it public again later on when it has a lot more value. I don't know. But anyway, the firm also alleged that the Guillemot family and Tencent's collaboration blocked potential acquisitions and partnerships that could have been beneficial for the company and its shareholders. Yves Guillemot has been, he's uh, the CEO, has been under a lot of scrutiny lately and for good reason because Ubisoft is just... Like I said, time and time again, a trash company. There's so much going on there that is so negative. It's rare. I haven't heard anything positive come out of Ubisoft for a couple years now. Okay? And it's just been this general naizma surrounding the company. And gamers are more and more tired of them. They, they just... More and more people are turning their back on it. They don't want to involve themselves with a company that... Obviously, doesn't care about its gamers. You know, you don't own. You know, get used to not owning your games. I mean, if I pay you seventy dollars for something, I expect to own it, right? And the problem is, you know, and this is that whole argument now of digital versus physical copy. But still, a physical copy can be just as worthless one day. You know, um, your disc, like especially a lot of discs, are just basically keys to unlock the game. And you get that day one patch that just downloads the entire game and the day one patch and all that kind of stuff. Or it just unlocks the game for you and you just download the game to your hard drive. Um, and it's just there to make sure that you still have that game in your possession, right? That you still own it and you didn't trade it into, you know, a friend or something like that. And now he's playing it too. So you just need that key on that disc at all times. You know, physical media can get damaged. It can get lost. It can get stolen. So... You know, there's pluses and minuses to both sides of these things. Anyway, a rumor from an alleged Ubisoft insider also informed YouTuber Endymion, who shared that Ubisoft was using the implementation of Yasuke into their game to steer the public reception of not only Shadows, but Ubisoft as a company in general towards a scenario that would actually lead to a buyout. 
I said that a long time ago, that they need to be bought out. I just never expected it to be an inside job. That's something that never really occurred to me. Uh, he explained, As I was told, Tencent allegedly was a big pusher of Yasuki becoming the main character of Shadows. Ubisoft, of course, was considering the idea, but Tencent was really the ones that pushed that vision into reality. Allegedly, Yasuke was pushed because Tencent knew the inclusion of his character as the leading man in a Japanese assassin's game would raise many eyebrows and cause public outcry, which I mean, they're right, it did exactly that. He continued, and the discussion surrounding the game has not died down since for good reason. As I'm told, decisions like implementing Yasuke, which would lead to many boycotting the game, was something pushed by Tencent investors to purposely tank Ubisoft in order to weaken the company towards an acquisition, effectively leading to Ubisoft as now becoming far weaker, worth far less than it should be, and placing itself plump and ready for Tencent to waltz in and swallow the entire company whole and obtain them, he stated. That would be huge, man. That would be huge. A Bloomberg report by Vinicy Chan, Dong Chiao, and Benoit Bethelot claimed at the beginning of this month that Tencent Holdings and the Guillemot family were considering options, including a potential buyout of the French video game developer after it lost more than half its market value this year, according to people familiar with the matter. The report added, the Chinese tech company and Guillemot Brothers LTD Limited have been speaking with advisors to help explore ways to stabilize Ubisoft and bolster its value, the people said asking not to be identified discussing a private matter. One of the possibilities being discussed would involve teaming up to take the company private, according to the people. And moving on, the Ubisoft spokesman appeared to confirm this report, telling VGC Ubisoft has noted recent press speculation regarding potential interests around the company. Uh, spokesman added the company reiterates that management is currently focused on executing its strategy centered on two core verticals, open world adventures and games as a service and native experiences. These guys got to stop with that garbage, man. It's just not working for anybody. Here's that Prince of Persia game. Anyway, what do you think, guys? Ubisoft going down, going private, going to get bought out. Uh, do you think they're going to have to tear the company apart and sell off IPs? There's a lot of things that could happen at this time. I'm real curious to see what's going on. How long, um, you know, just how far are they going to fall before they get back up if they ever are going to do so? I don't know. Anyway, leave a like on the video down below if you enjoyed it at all. Please don't forget to leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on Ubisoft and what's happening today. Subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, guys. I'll see you all next time. Until then, peace.